Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So I'm sorry that my hair is a mess and I don't have that much makeup on but I really wanted to get a video up for you guys tomorrow so I can do my best again to stick to my filming schedule. Also excuse this like face demon. I've been messing with it which I know I shouldn't be but oh well. So Today's video is going to be my August favorites. Today is August 30th. Tomorrow, when this video is going up, will be August 31st. So I am filming this video just in time to end um, the month of August. So as always, excuse any noises in the background. They're my pets that make noise, so I'm sorry. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started. So my first favorite of the month is this Tarte Drink of H2O Hydrating Boost. Um, basically like a gel moisturizer and it's phenomenal so I got the little sample size it came with three different samples and this was by far my favorite out of the three samples so it is a moisturizer um, you can kind of see it it's very jelly like it smells very fresh very clean the one thing it doesn't look like I've used a lot but it's because I haven't but I use it often and the thing that I really like about it is it's very very hydrating without being oily and also a little bit goes a long way so it's gonna take me a while to get through this whole jar but I will absolutely repurchase it when it gets to that time if they still sell it by then but it is really really great I love it I have in the summertime I have very oily skin and in the winter time I have very dry skin and this moisturizer is perfect for both the summer and the winter time for me because in the summertime when I have really oily skin I don't always want to moisturize in the morning because I'm just afraid that it's going to clog my pores or just make me look even more oily than I already will be throughout the day but with it being a gel formula it's very light but also very moisturizing so it moisturizes my skin without making it oily and then of course in the winter time it still does a really good job at moisturizing my skin but it does a very good job in the winter as well at hydrating my skin and keeping it hydrated throughout the day without like me having dry patches in my skin when I put on that moisturizer and then put on my primer and everything else and do my makeup I find that just having that extra layer of protection and of moisturization really does help out my skin so my next favorite for this month is the this is not it actually is the Luminous uh, Voluminous Lash Paradise, the waterproof version. So I have seen many of YouTubers talking about this mascara. I first heard it from Tati. This is by L'Oreal. Um, although when Tati talked about it, she talked about the regular version. And when I was in Target one day, I was browsing through their makeup section, saw that they had it in a waterproof version, and immediately went for that version because if you struggle with having your lashes stay curled. I cannot get my eyelashes to hold a curl with normal mascara. I can curl my lashes, put mascara on it, and within an hour they've fallen down. And with waterproof mascaras, I guess whatever formulation is in there that's different from normal mascaras and non-waterproof mascaras, it just holds the curl a lot better. I'm not saying that it does phenomenal work for my lashes but it does a lot better than normal mascaras so I really do like the voluminous mascara because it is one mascara that I find does not clump a lot and really separates my lashes and makes my lashes hold their curl for a pretty good amount of time so as you can see you can actually see my top lashes obviously that's not the same as my bottom lashes because my bottom lashes are pretty non-existent but you can see my top lashes you can see that there is a curl there and my lashes have held that curl all day today it is 7 p.m and my lashes have held that curl so for mascara and for me personally it's a really good mascara and i do really really like it and i've been using it ever since i got it which is probably way before august but i really do love that mascara so my next favorite may be a little controversial, but it is something that I actually really, really do like, and that is the Jaclyn Hill Morphe Collaboration Palette. And I've seen a lot of people review this palette. I personally um, didn't feel like doing a review on this palette just because there were already so many people reviewing this palette. 
but I will say I did buy this palette when it launched because I saw the colors and immediately I just had to have it. One, because you get so many different shades in here and two, because these bottom two rows here are shades that don't exist in my makeup collection. Like this bright teal and this bright cobalt blue is so beautiful. That's immediately what drew my attention to this look. Even this like green color right here, the shimmer, is so beautiful. And I've done many makeup looks using this palette. Um, I really, really like it. I think the colors blend really well. I think the shimmers pop really well. I really enjoy this palette and I use this palette every single day. Like, I may not use all the colors in this palette every day, but the colors that I use the most on a regular basis is this color right here and then this color right next to it. So usually if I'm going for like a natural makeup look like this, I didn't put any on today. But sometimes when I go for a more natural makeup look like today, I like to pop a color in my crease. Obviously I didn't do that today, but if I do decide to pop a color in my crease, it will 99% of the time be this color and then I will add this color right here as a highlight or a brow bone highlight. But I don't know why I didn't do it today, probably because I'm getting over a cold and I just didn't feel like doing it. It, but I almost always use these two shades pretty much every single day. So another favorite for the month of August is my tongue piercing. Now I did a video that went up on Tuesday of me changing my tongue piercing and I ended up changing it back to the regular barbell. that I had it in. I know this barbell is really long, but honestly it's very comfortable in my mouth and I don't think that it clinks around a lot. The issue that I have with the barbell that I changed it into was, I know this is really bad for me, so maybe, you know, it's not the barbell's fault. It's mostly my fault because I like to, like, move my tongue ring around in my mouth and, like, move it around in my teeth and something that I do that I know is really bad for my teeth is I like to do that with my barbell. So basically what I do is I end up like moving the barbell like to the side with my teeth and then like biting onto it with my molars and I know that's really terrible but I basically like chew but not chew on the barbell which is bad because the barbell is made out of metal. So it's really bad for my teeth. I don't recommend that you do that but since I have been doing that and like I mentioned in my changing my tongue ring um, for the first time is this barbell and these, well these balls specifically, on this tongue ring and in that pack, when I had this tongue ring in my mouth, the balls felt almost like a squishy texture and I can't describe it because when I'm holding it in my hand it doesn't, it kind of feels that way, but I mean you wouldn't really be able to tell between this and like the barbell that I have in besides um, this one being just like metal and then this one being metal coated and basically paint. So anyway, but for whatever reason, in my mouth this ball felt very squishy and I wanted to just chew on it and I know that's really bad to do, but since I did it, it ended up like, see if you can see that, the paint started to chip off of the barbell. So I once the paint started to chip when I would move it around in my mouth since the paint was chipped it kind of there's like a texture difference so instead of it being smooth all the way around there's like scratches and it's scratched in my mouth where the paint chips were so it just became uncomfortable to wear so I ended up just taking it out and putting in my regular barbell because I'm used to this one I've had it um, obviously I got pierced with it and I've had it in since I got it pierced so I'm just very used to having it in my mouth and plus um, I mentioned again in my tongue piercing video the balls on this barbell are a lot smaller than the balls on the barbells and the tongue rings that I bought from Spencer's so I'm just used to how this one feels in my mouth so I'm probably going to keep this one in for a little bit and then maybe I'll decide to change it again some other time. So my favorite song for this month is Despacito and it is not the one by Justin Bieber although I've listened to that one and I like it but I actually listened to the original one first before I even 
listen to the one by Justin Bieber and then after listening to that one for so long and then listening to the Justin Bieber one I just really like this version so much better and this is by Luis Fonzi featuring Daddy Yankee and it's such a good song it's really really good and I thought about looking at the lyrics so that I could actually know what they're saying um because I just think it's really a good song and I just really enjoy it it's like an upbeat song, but it's kind of sexy at the same time, and of course with like the whole accent thing going on there, it's just a really, it's a really good song, and I really enjoy it. So my next favorite is another makeup item. This is the Light Chaser Highlighter for Face and Eye in, um, I don't know. It says Pearl Flash is Gold, but I don't know if that's the name of the highlighter or if it's just this description of the product, but it looks like this and you open it up there's a mirror on this side and the highlighter looks like this and for some reason this highlighter is just so pretty and so with the flash on my phone i just don't know if this is doing it like any justice like whatsoever besides just creating like the most awkward shadow in the world can you even see it i don't know Maybe it's just an awkward shadow. But in person, it's just the shift of this highlighter is so pretty. And when I first saw it in Sephora, I swatched it and I was like, wow, that's really, really pretty. But for some reason, it kind of felt duochrome in a way that it was gold and then green. And then I was like, well, maybe it's just me. Or maybe it's just like the lighting of the store that I was in and then I went back to Sephora and I swatched it again and I was like you know this is really really pretty and I just love the way that this catches the light and you can kind of see it right there I just thought it was so beautiful and so pretty and I was like you know what I'm gonna get it so I did get it I forgot how much it was I'll put it um, in the description below but I really have been enjoying this highlight the next thing that I got at Sephora, I was going to do a Sephora haul, but I really didn't get that much. I got like three things, so I didn't feel like it was worth doing a Sephora haul on three things. But I did end up picking up the Urban Decay Velvetizer um, setting powder, and I really like this. I didn't think I was going to like it. I thought it was just going to be a hyped up product. So I've been in the market for a new setting powder because I ran out of my Laura Mercier translucent setting powder and I've been sticking to the Cody Airspun setting powder, translucent setting powder, and I really like this setting powder. I think it does a fine job. It is just so incredibly strong scented. It is just so pungent when you open it and then when you put it on your face it's just like that smell just like intensifies and it just kind of gives me a headache and after it's on my face I mean the smell dissipates and it goes away and I don't notice it after that but it's just like I mean it's a good setting powder but I just wanted another higher end setting powder so I went to Sephora a while ago and was looking for the Urban Decay Velvetizer but they didn't have it in the Sephora that I was at and so I waited and I waited and I thought about ordering online, but then I was like, no, I'll just have to pay extra for shipping, so I might as well just wait till it comes in the store. Sorry, my dog's playing with the squeaky toy. Um, so I went into Sephora and I looked for it and I couldn't find it and I went online and I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna have pay I'm just gonna have to pay extra for shipping. So I'll just wait till it comes to my Sephora and then I'll get it then. So I waited and I waited and I finally went and they had it. And I the first place that I saw this was Tati. Um on YouTube and I heard her talk really highly of it and I was like okay I'm gonna try it but when I saw this like this is not a lot and I say that because I still have like my mostly empty translucent setting powder um, from Laura Mercier and the size comparison for this I mean this is pretty small compared to the Laura Mercier translucent setting powder and the Laura Mercier one is expensive and this one is also not cheap and then compare this one to my Cody Airspun which is way more massive way less expensive and has so much more product in it so I was like is it really worth using this every single day because I'm just gonna blow through it in like a month and I mean when I put this on my face and I, I 
powdered my face with it. I set my trouble areas. I didn't set my under eyes with it because I heard that it kind of gives like a weird effect to your under eyes. So I just set like my porous areas with it. Did a flawless job at concealing my pores, minimizing my pores, and then I went to like just feel it on my face and my face felt so smooth. It felt so soft and it literally felt like velvet. I just, I touched my face and I was like, oh my god. I was like, my face. I just like wanted to just like rub my face the entire day because it was so soft and it did such a good job at controlling oil and making sure that I didn't get too oily in my t-zone. And I think it is a really incredible product. I think it's really, really good. I think it's worth the money. However, I wish you got a little bit more product in here. And also, I don't think it's something that I am going to use every single day. I use it often, but I mainly use it if I'm doing like full glam makeup. So like for today, for instance, I don't have any eye makeup on besides eyeliner and mascara, and that's it. And then as far as face makeup goes, I mean, I have like a little contour and bronzer, a little bit of blush. Like I'm pretty sure all my blush has worn off by today, and I'm pretty sure my highlight has worn off today. So I don't do, I haven't done a lot of makeup on my face today, so I'm not going to use that because I feel like it's special, you know, it's for like special makeup, so I don't want to use it for my everyday makeup because it's too good for that. So I use my Cody Airspun for like my lazy day makeup, and then when I feel like doing like full glam where I do like a full eye makeup look and I do false lashes and all of that, then I use that. So. I think it's really, really good for special occasions though. And if you want to use it every single day, then you go ahead and you use it every single day. But for me, I just, I don't want to like, I don't want to waste it on normal makeup. Like you're too good for my normal makeup. You have to be used for those special makeup days where my makeup can just look bomb. So I do really like it. Do you wish you got more product though. So my last favorite for the month of August are these lashes and th these are the Everlasting Lashes by Sephora and House of Lashes. I guess it was like a collab they did or whatever. But these lashes, I have gone through so many pairs of these lashes. This is like my fifth pair, I'm pretty sure. Like I just, I don't know what it is about them, the band the the separation of the lashes the wispiness but yep it adds so much drama the way that it like tapers in to the inner corner it's just these lashes are like that have like changed my life and these are the everlasting lashes by house of lashes and sephora collection so the box looks like this and these are the everlasting ones and I have, like, I have gone through so many, like, these are not even all the boxes. Like, I'm pretty sure, like, this is my fifth pair of these lashes. I love these lashes. They're so good. And they're kind of pricey. Uh, again, I don't know how much they were off the top of my head. I'll list everything in the description box that I can find. Um, but they're kind of expensive for eyelashes, but they're so good. And when I first bought these, I was in Sephora and I was looking for some higher end eyelashes. Because the eyelashes that I usually wear are the Kiss Lashes in style number 11. And these are like the exact, almost the exact same, but better. You know, like, but these lashes are like the number 11s but better. And so when I am feeling like, you know, I don't have the time or the money to spend on these lashes, then I'll go to the Kiss Lashes in style number 11. But when I just like, I just sometimes have my makeup days where I'm just like, I need these lashes in this look. Like these lashes just make every single look, they just I just love them. Like, I have never felt so passionate about a pair of fake eyelashes, but oh my god, these are so good. So, these are by House of Lashes and the Sephora collection. You can find them in Sephora, but I don't know what it is about these lashes. They're so good. So, I think I was going off on a tangent, but the band, when I first got these lashes, I was looking at them because I needed some new eyelashes, and I was in Sephora, and I was like, I might as well pick up, like, a nice brand of eyelashes, and... I saw these and I was like, these look really close to my number 11s that I really like, so I'll go with these. So I got them, 
went home, started to do my makeup, took the lashes out, went to put them on my eye, and I looked at the band and I was like, oh my god, this band is so thick. I was like, there is no way in hell that these lashes are going to look good on my eyeballs because when I first started wearing false lashes, sometimes I would not put, I, I was terrible at putting on false lashes when I was first starting out so I would put the lashes on my eyes and they would glue to my eyes and they were all fine and dandy and then all of a sudden like instead of them being like nice and florally upwards they would just be like blunt like that and you could like see the lash band you could see the fake lashes when my eyes were open it was almost like my eyes were closed like the lashes looked like my eyes should have been closed at the angle that they were and no matter what I did I tried to like reposition them and they just for whatever reason like would always droop like that and it was only my right eye for whatever reason and my right eye whenever I put on false lashes the lashes would always droop like that drove me insane I finally throughout trial and error figured out a way to put on false lashes where they looked bomb and they looked good so I found the pair of lashes that I really liked from the drugstore, the Kiss brand, the style number 11 I found really really worked for me and worked for my eye shape and worked for my technique and so I just lived by those lashes religiously and so when I was brave enough to branch out, also the Demi Wispies um, by Ardell are also really good. So those two lashes I really just stuck with because I was like, these work for me. I can put these on and make them look good and they can stay looking good for as long as I need them to. And so then when I went and changed to the House of Lashes lashes, I took them off the little like plastic thing that they're on and I looked at the band and I was like, this band is so thick. And I was like, there is no way in hell that this is going to look good on my eyes. It's just going to do that droopy thing. But... By God, I put them on like I normally would and they looked so good and I just immediately fell in love with them and whenever I go into Sephora, if I'm like, I need new lashes, these are the lashes that I'm getting because they're just so good. And for me, these lashes just add the perfect amount of curve, the perfect amount of volume, they frame my eyes very well. I just love how they look. And for me, with like the Demi Wispies and the Ardell lashes, or the Demi Wispies and the Style Number 11 lashes, whenever I would turn to the side, you could see the difference between like the fake lashes and then my natural lashes. So they would be like, these are my fake lashes and these are my natural lashes. So whenever I turned to the side, you could see that difference. And that always drove me crazy. And I would never wear mascara with false lashes because I just felt like since mascara doesn't curl my lashes and hold that curl like falsies are curled, I just felt like it just emphasized that difference so I never wore mascara with my false lashes I still never wear mascara with my false lashes with the exception of these house of lashes lashes because when I put them on and I turned to the side like that that gap was almost completely gone like you could not tell where my fake lashes began and where my real where my real lashes began and where my fake lashes ended it was just it was such a game changer for me I just instantly fell in love with them then and I actually wore mascara with these false lashes and felt so comfortable in them so these are just by far like so good they're just so good so I've been ranting forever and forever and forever about a pair of lashes so, so that is it for my August 2017 favorites I hope you guys enjoyed if you did please give it a thumbs up also go down below subscribe hit that bell icon so you get notified of when I upload videos I am doing my very very best to be uploading on Tuesday Thursday and Saturday three days a week at 12 p.m. all three days also, just kind of like on a more serious note, please keep those who have been affected by Hurricane Harvey in your thoughts and prayers. I do not live in Texas. I live in North Carolina, very far away from Texas, but I have just seen on my news um, on my news app that I have on my phone, it's just story after story after story of devastation in Texas, and I just feel for those people who are suffering. So please, please keep those people in your thoughts and prayers. If you do not or are not subscribed or follow Bunny Myers or Graveyard Girl on her channel or on Facebook, she did post a link on her Facebook that you can send money to help those in need in Texas. So 
if you feel inclined to, please visit her Facebook page and feel free to donate a dollar, donate five dollars, just do what you can to help out because, you know, when, when disaster strikes, community is so important. So just keep these people in your thoughts and prayers. I hope you guys have an awesome day and I will see you in the next one. Bye! I did... I don't know why I didn't want to do it today. Probably because... Excuse you. And I looked at it... You know. Hey. Hold on for a second. Um, hey, can you, can you... I know you're excited, but can you hold off for like two more minutes? These are the everlasting... <coughs> oh, that is it for my August favorites. I hope you guys enjoyed. <laughs>